Welcome to another episode of Talk Smart with Pew and McCart. I'm Andrew McCart. That is Joe Pew. Episode 16. And what an episode this is going to be because last night, I was meant to be at the show last night, Joe, but unfortunately, not unfortunately, I wouldn't say that, but I had a family thing to take care of and you jumped on it. You, you were a willing step in, substitute to take on the, to go up to Sheffield and cover the show. I'm just going to say it now. You're a lucky, lucky SOB. I'll say that because yeah. that what a show that was last night. And when it comes to a Lee Wood fight, I would say grab a bag of popcorn, sit down, relax, and enjoy a fight worthy to be on a Rocky movie. That's how I see Lee Wood nowadays. It was a phenomenal fight last night. Atmosphere, everything. But you were there, Joe. Break it down. Oh, it was it was unbelievable. It was absolutely unbelievable. From the crowd, just never seen an atmosphere like it. Um the, the, the ring walks were unreal. And then the fight starts. Close first two rounds. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, to be honest, I think I edged them to Josh, um, maybe the second Lee. And then it just become quite a shutout. Look, Lee just looked slow. He didn't hold his feet. It, it, it was very strange. And everyone's just kind of looking around thinking, it's not really... How that we thought this was going to play out? Is this living up to expectations? And it was like the, the Nottingham fans then could become a little bit dead, and then just out of nowhere, the end of round seven, you get the little clacker for the ten seconds to remain in, and just I, th- I think it was a five punch combo that put him down. I watched it a few times. It was that one two, then a one two three. I mean, a right hook, was... initial right hook as Josh came in. Uh, he was in the southpaw stance, Lee, and obviously he came in with a yeah. shot. Short right hook, and then it happened again. Threw a couple of shots, then it was a, a right hook and another left hook behind it, which put him down again. So wow, yeah, a three piece, five piece. What do you want to say? But great combination from from uh, Lee Wood. Yeah, and the power was still there, obviously, because we will we will talk about whether it was controversial the finish in the end. Um, but Josh Warrington was hurt. And and he definitely was hurt. Whether he could have carried on, I'm sure we'll discuss that. But I thought, wow, wow. And just like that, it's Lee Wood. He's never in a dull fight. Mm-hmm. If you look, he's had three world title fights in eight, uh, eight months now. Like, he, he's an active world champion. And then when you look before that, you obviously had the Michael Conlon fight, which was a fairy tale in itself. Michael Conlon was there last night, um, announced his fight against Jordan Gill in Belfast. But I'm sure we'll come on to that. Um. Yeah, magical night. How did you uh, see it from from the benefits of the TV, mate? Well, benefits of the TV, yes. But like I said, I'm going to keep harping on about it, Joe. Joe, I wish I was there last night. But um, yeah, yeah, listen, it was, again, like I said to you, just grab a bag of popcorn, sit down and relax. Because Josh Warrington brings a good fight. He always always tries, he always on that front foot. And what surprised me with, with Josh last night was... Is because he's on maybe he doesn't get known for his boxing skills or his ability to box, but he boxed well last night off the back foot. Do you know what I mean? And you can talk about like I know Josh has his critics with the way he fights with the headbutts, elbows, and rabbit punches back of the head, but he always comes comes to fight. Um, but like I say, I yeah, you, you broke it down perfectly there. First couple of rounds a little bit edgy, but then Josh was working the body and doing what he does best in terms of throwing a lot of combinations and he was taking a step back, high guard, trying to catch, catch and counter. And it was working for him. And it was just that sort of southpaw stance. And like I said to you, Lee Wood does not know when to quit. The Michael Coleman fight, he showed it. And you know what I mean? The Lara fight, the first fight, he wanted to, can, you see how annoyed he was, maybe annoyed, maybe the wrong word, but how disappointed he was at not carrying on after that knockdown and Ben threw in the towel. But afterwards, yeah. it was the right decision. Um, and obviously he got his get back with what Lara, and then he goes in again and against Warrington and an old British clash for a world title. When you've got two cities that are football daft, they bring them fans, passionate fans, passionate sport fans, not just football fans, passionate sports fans. Um, you've just got a, an absolute recipe there for a, a magnificent fight, and that's exactly what it was. And I think we're going to come on to the, the stoppage, right? Because I almost thought, like, I, I, I wasn't watching the count when it was happening, because I was always like, oh, whoa, 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 you're in that sort of, he knocked him down, he's knocked him down. So I wasn't watching the count, wasn't watching the Michael Alexander, and then he waved the fight off. So I, I assumed that he got to 10 when Josh turned round. But now after watching it back, watching it back in preparation for the show, he got up at four, the bell went, 
for the end of the round as he went down almost, right? And then Josh got up at four, walked over to his corner, right? So obviously the round, did, he's probably heard, I don't know, that the round had gone, walked over to his corner, up at four, and then at eight, he turned round. Yeah. He turned round at eight, and then Michael Alexander waved off. So again, Michael's the only one in there that can see into Josh's eyes. They, he can see, he's got a better, he's got a better view of what we can see, obviously. Uh, from the TV angles, but again, I, I'm just saying he turned around to eight, and could he have gave him the benefit of the doubt to get that minute's rest? Because I, I see on Twitter or X, what you want to call it, that they're saying that Lee got out with the Michael Collins fight, the knockdown, and because he he got that minute to recover because it was right at the end of the round. But listen, like I said to you, Michael Alexander, he uh, he knows best. He he's been in many world title fights. He's refereed. He's a good referee, so he probably saw something in. Josh's eyes that we couldn't see, and that's the reason why he called it off. But I, I saw Josh turn around at eight, and that's what I saw in the videos. Um, so I was like, mm, I don't know what. Where do we go from this? Does it want a rematch at the city ground? Who knows? We know that Lee was moving up in weight. He's had enough at yeah. uh, featherweight, and that's probably maybe why he was maybe a little bit slow in the fight to move his feet. He was talking about his feet and his hands. He looked a little bit sluggish. Maybe that, that weight cut does it to you. And we've seen it with fighters that if they went, go at the well too many times, they, they, they fade in a fight. Yeah. Um, I think we all knew in the build-up it was going to be Lee's last one at Feather because the, the, the mandatory was coming in. You, you wouldn't want to fight that mandatory anyway because it just makes no commercial sense. And that city ground calls for a big name. Everyone knows if you come past that, it's the city ground. And like... Ten years ago, when there was a controversial stoppage with Frotch and Groves, um, mm -hmm. it called for a big rematch in the stadium, and we could get, see that th next year. Um, City Ground, the rematch. I know Josh and his manager Steve Wood last night was calling for that. Um, yeah, Lee Wood says he'll fight anyone that makes sense. Talk about Joe Cordina if if mm -hmm. Cordina comes through his fight coming up, which which would be a hell of an ask for. Lee in his first fight as Super Feather going up against the IBF champ. But mm. I don't know. What, what, what would you like to see? Do, do you think it, that warrants a rematch? I think it does, right? Because Josh was... Like, listen, Josh was, was, was winning the fight probably four rounds to two. and a lot Boxing of people, really well as well. Exactly that. And obviously, but again, it's Lee Wood. Lee Wood is probably one of my favourite fighters right now just because of the way he finishes fights. And he's got that... that never say die attitude and I love that in a fighter yep. but I think the only two fights that make sense for Lee Wood at the city ground is two rematches yeah Josh Warrington and Michael Collin the reason I say Mike Collin right he's fighting Jordan Gill and we all know that Jordan Gill and Lee Wood are best mates especially in the boxing world Um, and if Mike Collin beats uh, Jordan Gill there's a little story a little get back for Lee Wood to get hit and obviously we know how that fight ended in the first fight so that I think Mick Collin brings the Irish fans, right? So if you want to fill the city ground, Mick Collin yeah. bring in his fans as well, and then Josh Warrington bring his fans some leads. They're the only two fighters in the UK that I think that can that can sell that city ground with Lee Wood is Mick Collin and Josh Warrington, and it makes sense because of how the, 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 there's there's obviously animosity there now. Obviously, Josh wants to get his revenge over Lee Wood because of how it stopped. Michael Conlon was probably winning the fight as well, going and going into that like that last twenty seconds, whatever it was in that fight last round. So he wants to get his get back, and he said it on numerous interviews that he wants that rematch. And now he's moved up to super featherweight as well. We don't know what Josh is doing. Will he move up to super featherweight because he's he makes the weight seemingly quite easily. Uh, he's not as big as Lee would. So yeah, for me, Mick Conlon or Josh Warrington as a rematch. What do you think? I think definitely Josh Warrington, as I said, and I think Michael Conlon if. It's an emphatic victory over Jordan Gill. Mm. I think he needs to make a bit of a statement. And it's a tough fight. Jordan Gill's obviously game. He's coming up in weight as well. Mm -hmm. They're all coming up in weight. Um, because I think after what happens in the happened in the Lewis Alberto Lopez fight, I think for Conlon to announce himself on that world level again, I think he does need to have a big statement performance. And then we should, we're right back there. Mm -hmm. But the great thing about this is Lee Wood's been a world champion, or well, two-time world champion, right? So, realistically, these world titles don't actually matter. So, these are all around the same size, and they're all getting older. So, they can just move up to Super Feather. Mm -hmm. it, it, and then it doesn't really matter. because So, Josh Warrington, Michael Conlon, yes. 
as I say, there was talk of Cordina. Um, Cordina probably from more of a kind of the, or the world title pool for Lee Wood. Does he want to become a, a two-weight mm-hmm. world champion? But as you say, has Joe Cordina got the travelling fans that Michael Conlon and Josh Warrington has? Probably not. That's mm-hmm. not taking away anything from Joe Cordina's fan base, but we know the craziness of Michael Conlon, what he's done in New York, what he's done in Belfast. Josh Warrington, he sold out Le- Headingley. He sold out the Leeds Football Stadium. He sold out Leeds Arena multiple times. He can travel. He's wanted those US trips. We know the fans will travel. They come out in full force last night. So, yeah, those two. But Belfast, Conlon, Gill, I feel like, Big performance needed from Michael Conlon. Yes, and I think that's you will get a big performance from Michael, especially with this new weight, new trainer. He's got a whole new team behind him as well. Yeah. And in terms of training, uh, uh, training uh, coaches and stuff like that, and he's out in America. He's doing his thing. He's he's obviously investing in himself now. So I'm expecting a big performance from Mick, and I'm sure we're definitely going to get one. And um, just obviously, I was doing a little research as well, and I was thinking, you know, when back in 2000, it was it 2020, right, when Lee Wood lost to Jazza Dickens in a in a ten round that Josh Wongton was world yep. champion, and it, you almost thought back then, only three years ago, that there was no chance of Lee Wood ever getting to fight Josh Wongton for a world title. But then three years later, Wood's the champion and Wongton's the challenger, and it's just boxing for me is one of the mad sports. And talking about the the city ground fight, you you spoke about Joe Cordina there, um. Obviously, the story there is the world title, a two-weight world yeah. champion. But I think that the, the McConlin rematch and the Josh Wongton, there's a backstory there. There's 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 something you can sell the fight on in terms of like it was controversial for um Josh Wongton because he turned around at eight. That's what I believe. Listen, if you disagree with me, then leave a comment, obviously. But um and obviously the McConlin, the way he lost that fight, you know what I mean he was probably ahead on some of the cards. Uh, Lee Wood was coming into fight later on. So there's all there's two backstories there. Do you know what I mean? And obviously the build up to them two fights with Mick and with Josh Warrington or Josh Warrington is going to be immense. Do you know what I mean? It's going to be it's going yeah. to be another build up. And you know, for us and IFL TV and other boxing outlets, we love a backstory. We love when fighters and press conferences are going wild and there's little pushes and shoving and whatnot and a little bit of animosity between the fighters. It builds for a better story and builds for a better fight, I believe, in some cases. So yeah, I think Joe Cordina, great fight. I think it'll be a great fight for Lee Wood, but I think the, the backstories for Mick Conlon and Josh Wongton may be a little bit better for that city ground, to sell up that city ground. Yeah, definitely. And with Josh Warrington, which slightly differs from Michael Conlon, is after last night, I think they could become a little bit more hostile towards each other. Mm. Lee Wood is saying that he was getting punched around the back of the head multiple times. Um, he did have a big lump on his head, which uh, I don't know if people saw in the photos, but I saw that last night. Uh, and then the stoppage. And we know Josh can be an aggressive man. Uh, so that I, I think that could really heat up. Michael Conlon, I, I don't think it will be the same sort of disrespect between them two because... Speaking to MacArthur, he respects him. He says, look, it was fair. We all saw what happened there. Um, but, as you say, because of the first fight, it still warrants it. Mm-hmm. And don't get me wrong. Away from this, Michael Conlon and Josh Ryan can fight each other. All these guys can fight each other. Look, I know Lee's aging. He, Lee's saying that he's taking it fight by fight. The city ground might be just the cherry on top of the cake and he might bowl out or he might try and go over to the States and have one over there. We'll wait and see. But all these guys can fight each other, whether it's a feather or super feather. Not feather now for Lee because he can't make that anymore. But yeah, we've got a great crop of guys and we've been talking about it for a long time. And that, and we've got it. We have got it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, let's let's just keep on making them. Because as that feather, super feather, whatever you want to call it, they're producing great fights and great, Great nights for British boxing, and like you say, we you don't need a world title on the line because if you talk, just talk about the three no, fights. Not anymore. Yet, they've all got a fan base where they'll travel, whether it be Belfast, Leeds, Cardiff for for Joe Cardino or Nottingham. Do you know what I mean they've all got these fan bases that will follow them no matter what, whether it be for a world title or whether it just be for a minor title. They're, they're going to be there because of the the support they have for the, yeah. the fighters. And um, but talking about, I want to just touch on a little bit because the now the. Wood's going to vacate the title. You've got Komatov and a guy called Ray Ford that I've I've had the privilege to watch a couple of his fights and we became friends. 
slick, yeah. slick, slick American southpaw fighter, very, very good fighter. And then you've got Kolmatov, who I watched uh, against Tommy Ward a few months back. Um, I don't know how he makes you want to see somebody make featherweight. This guy is enormous and he makes one, two, six. This guy is absolutely massive, Kolmatov. So, um, yeah, that's a fight that I want. I can't wait to see. Just a little touch on that that fight, and I'm pretty sure that Eddie will promote that fight because I think he's got Ray Ford. So, yeah, what a fight that's going to be. So, because they're, they're probably not household names that the UK fans don't know about, but I'm telling you right now, these two guys fighting for that uh, Woods Old Belt, they're going to put on a show. It's going to be a great fight. That's a great clash of styles as well. Mm. Uh, Komatov to come down there, little beast, and right forward. I, I, I really like he's a slick, obviously boxer, and um, yeah, I've been a big fan of right forward for a, for a long, long time now. And uh, yeah, the feather, the featherweight division, especially on that WBA quarter of things, shall maintain that level of excitement. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, like I, I saw your interview with Eddie in uh, post fight, and he was mentioning sort of like yeah. the run up coming up and. Even the next gen card being being announced. I mean, with Pat McCormick fighting Dobson as well. I mean, and then you've got Katie Taylor and the Belfast one, and the shows out in America. I mean, to be fair, Eddie, he gets a lot of stick with that. Is some 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 runner shows coming up, especially that I'm buzzing because if I get to go to Ireland, man, for those two weeks, the Dublin and Belfast one, it's going to be exciting times because, uh, them that that Belfast card for me, I know every single fighter on the card, and I. I know that Sean McComb and Sam Maxwell are ex stable mates. He's to go and visit them in the gym. You've got Lewis Clark yeah. and Tyler McKenna. That's just going to be an absolute barnstormer of a fight. McCollin fighting Jordan Gill is going to be a great fight. Do you know what I mean? You've just got great fights up and uh, keeping a jargo against Troy Williamson as well. What great a fight. That that, that, I think that, that, that's going to go under the radar, that one. Yeah, I think so, but it shouldn't. And I just think the whole card is phenomenal, man. That Belfast one is probably one of the best cards. I've been to Belfast maybe the past since I've been at IFL seven years and I've not been for a fight over there for the best part of a year and a half now. But that for me is probably the best fight card uh, in Belfast yeah. that Belfast has ever seen with all the fighters on it. So that is a great, great card. And then he mentioned as well, Ben Eubank this week. Yeah. Joe, did he say anything to you off camera? Some things that I probably can't say on here, to be honest. But all I'll say is... um. Oh, there could be an announcement next week. There could be an announcement next week. There's a big event going on on the zone next week, so uh, be the perfect time to get all eyeballs on it. What is the big event, Joe? Speak to me. It's just a small matter of KSI versus Tommy Fury. We're probably actually going to break all box office records. It's a bit pay per view, pay per view buyers. Uh, that's going to be absolutely carnage. We were talking about it today actually over breakfast that. Apparently, Premier League footballers are being like declined on the guest list. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just pure A listers. Like, yeah, no one can get a ticket for love nor money. I think they're selling for like four grand ringside. Uh, yeah, it's, it's absolutely carnage, and I can't wait for it next week. Well, John, well, let's talk about it then because like, you know my thoughts on this misfits, right? You're almost like my manager now because you do all these shows. I'm putting, I'm giving you my manager status, right? I want you to be my manager, Joe. Okay. Get me a fight. On this misfits, all right. I'll give you twenty percent. Do your thing. Okay. I I will try my best, Andy. But what what is fantastic about this card is if you like that sort of thing, it is the best fight in every single weight division. So it's like they've got every single title on the line. So you've got literally the lightweight title, the the heavyweight title. So what they want to do is kind of get all eyes on every single star to try and make the new pay-per-view stars because KSI is not going to fight forever. Do mm. you know what I mean? The, the, this Misfits model has to become sustainable without KSI. So, yeah, there's uh, some uh, entertaining fights on it next week. Yeah, if if that's your sort of thing. But if even if it's not, I think you've got to tune in because it's a strange old thing with KSI and Tommy Fury. It, it will be the biggest, biggest event this year. Mm. See the thing is, Joe. I've probably, I honestly, hand on heart, I've never watched a Misfit card. Never. Um, Have you ever watched a Misfit fight? Never. Never watched a Misfit. Oh, fight. Not even a KSI fight. Not, ne never. I've, I've seen highlights of KSI. Okay. I've never sat down and put on the TV and watched a full fight from first bell to knockout or final bell. Never watched one. But I'm going to watch. There you go. Like, there you go. 
And I'll tell you why, because we're going to have to talk about it next week. So I'm going to have to know what I'm talking about on this show. So, um, and you, you mentioned there about sustaining that model. Do you honestly think, hand on heart, that this Misfits and this YouTube sort of model, it can withstand the test of time? Or is this just a, a thing that might just, as you say, KSI is the big name. He is the guy that does it. He is, yeah. he is Misfits Boxing. So do you think that Misfits can stick around? I don't know, to be honest. I really don't know. I think this will be a good indication on Saturday night because you've got... They're, they're, they're being very smart about it. They've got a guy called Winston Nunes fighting who's got something like 57 million followers on Instagram. He's like the, one of the biggest stars in Brazil. So they've tapped into that market and he's fighting a guy called My Mate Nate, right? Who... Your mate, his, or is his name My Mate Nate? His name is My Mate Nate. <laughs> that's the, that's his name, right? I think he's American, but he lives in Thailand and he's a massive star in Thailand. So they've got that Brazil versus Thailand. And then you've got Salt Pappy. I'm sure you've heard of Salt Pappy. I've heard of Salt Pappy. He's yeah. fighting Slim, which is like everyone's talking about that fight. Then you've got Astrid Wet. Have you heard of Astrid Wet? No. No. Oh, she's no, an no, old no, girl. Um, she, she fought Brooke, has she not? El Brooke? No, she hasn't. That's like the fight that everyone wants to right. make, but they, 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 they can't agree on a weight. Right. So, I don't know if you love all this. Do I like you I, I don't know if you like the only fan girls or the actual misfit boxing. I, I can't put my finger on it, mate. Which is which is it? No comment. And <laughs> um, <laughs> um, no, but she got through for it. She got thrown through a table, which went viral. So then, I think, uh, I've, seen that. I think I've seen that. Yeah. And she's being trained by Clifton Mitchell with Sandy Ryan, which is, uh, again, strange. Who else? Obviously, Dylan Dennis. You must have seen... Yeah, I've seen Dylan, yeah. I know Dylan, Dylan, Dylan Dennis. Dennis. I know Dylan Dennis. I know Logan and all that. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, will ta- yeah. That's taken over. I think that will become bigger than KSI Thomas Fury by the end of it. Yeah. By the end of, by the end of this week. Like, everything on Twitter is Dylan Dennis. Uh, yeah, Anthony Taylor. They, oh, they... That's something I want to fight, Anthony Taylor. I think I could beat him. Anthony Taylor's good. He's really good, Andrew, mate. Is he my size? <sighs> to be fair, probably. Good. You, yeah. Joe, Yo, there you go. You're my manager. Make the fight happen. Anthony Taylor beats Salt Pappy. Did he? Salt Pappy, yeah. Salt, Salt Pappy's one of the better ones, though, is he not? I know, but Anthony Taylor's, Anthony Taylor's all good. He took to, to, Tommy Fury's distance. I was there. I was took, at that fight. I was at that fight with Tommy Yeah. Fury. yeah. Look, that's, Idris Virgo, that's, that's what gets me the confidence that I can beat him because he was terrible against Tommy Fury. Yeah, he was. He was. He was. Do you think that uh, KSI can beat Tommy Fury? No. What K- would that uh, say? KSI's highlights, right, is he jumps in quite a lot. Brings both feet off the ground. All right? Now, when he jumps in, right, obviously Fury, Tommy's as a, as a boxer, right? You can see, wait, yeah. oh, he's never going to win a world title. Well, he's, he's got his critics, right? But that's that's neither here nor there. He's grown up in the boxing world. He's grown up with his dad and Tyson, right? All Tommy needs to do is box smart. KSI soon as KSI lunges in, but it's both feet off the ground, nice tight shot, and he can he can hurt him. And I think that in terms of pure boxing style, when you're just pointing at the jab, pointing at the jab, I don't think we'll see that. I think we'll just see what KSI does best. Because like I say, I've never seen this fight, but I've seen highlights, and I've seen enough highlights to know how he approaches the game. The big jumping in and big shot. Yeah. He, he jumps from one end of the ring to the other end of the ring. Do you know what I mean? So, I think if Tommy's tight, tight guard, boom, short shots as he comes in, I think Tommy Tommy can do it. And I think for the sake of boxing, for the sake of, yep. uh, for the sake of me, uh, I, I want him to win. And that, that's just, listen, it's not because I dislike KSI. I just think that a pure boxer should be beating a YouTuber. That's what I was going to say. What, what does that say about boxing if KSI was to pull off the upset? Uh, KSI is a boxer then. I know he's what, so KSI. Do you think KSI should then stop, not stop that, but then fight another boxer? Could, could... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't stop in Tommy Fury. Don't Jake Paul. Why not fight Jake Paul after that? Because I know that'll be a mega That's, fight. But, oh, they want that fight. They, they, yeah. they, and Jake, talk Paul's about... proven, Jake Paul has proven that he can, he, well, he takes the sport serious. Do you know what I mean? And, and, he, and he's willing to fight. The guys, he's often obviously yeah. old MMA guys, aye, but whatever. But he's still willing to get down and dirty, do you know what I mean? And put the work in and fight. So, if K, I hope he doesn't win, but if KSI wins, um, then it is what it is. I think that sometimes when a fighter, if you're fighting somebody 
and the guy you're fighting doesn't know what he's doing, really, doesn't know what he's doing, he's just swinging shots and stuff like that. It's hard for you to know what he's doing because you can't time him. You don't know you don't know when to slip a shot or whatever because he's just throwing random stuff. Uh, yeah. I'm not saying that that's KSI because he's a better boxer than what probably many people think from a YouTuber. I know he, he works hard as well. Um, and like I said, I've got nothing against KSI, but I just think that for the sake of boxing, Tommy beats him and he needs to beat him. Yeah, I completely agree. But just last one on Misfits, um, and uh, I'm sure we'll wrap up the show. When when was the last time, and if ever, you've ever seen Eddie Hearn at a non matrim show? Because I can't think of yeah, I can't think of I've ever seen I, him. I, I, and I, he's going to be there on Saturday night. That just tells you. This, how big it's going to be? Why, why is Eddie there? Just, just is that just because he wants to see the fight, or has he got? An, I think, an... yeah, I think he wants to just take in, take in the atmosphere. I think he'll probably take his uh, kids and, uh, yeah, did, be, be part of didn't it. Eddie create all this, though, Joe? Back in the day with Logan Paul and KSI, didn't he create this this monster? I actually think if b- before that, I think it was actually Spencer Oliver and Jake Wood when. Uh, they put on KSI versus Joe Weller, which was even before that. Oh, was that? So, uh, yeah. No, Logan Paul, did Logan Paul not fight KSI before that in Manchester? And I think no, that, no? KSI, Joe Weller was before that. You know yeah, your stuff, man. You're, saying, you're the misfits genius, man. You know all your stuff. Yeah? Yeah. No. But yeah. Well, yeah. listen, I, I don't think yeah. I'll, need get, I'll need to get a misfits car. I mean, I, might, I, I, I wouldn't mind a little fight, man. I've probably still got a little bit left in me. Do you know what I mean? Don't let fit Scotland start ripping it up. That's what they don't have. You were talking there that oh, they got a Brazilian guy, my mate Nate. He's from Thailand. You got nobody on the Misfits card from Scotland. There you go. There you go. Just give me, just get me to ten thousand followers on Instagram, Andrew McCart seventeen, and then we'll do it. I'm just I'm not, then we go on that. Surely that's a big enough following. Ten thousand on Instagram is it not? Who would who would be your trainer? Coogan. Coogan. No, I don't know. I'll probably keep it in Scotland. I'll probably go maybe Billy yeah, Nelson. It's, it's going to be Billy Nelson, mate. We I'm... we all know it's going to be Billy Nelson. Yeah. Oh, Billy, Billy, if you're watching, mate, can you train me, man? If I ever get a uh, Misfits card, I'll, I'll uh, yeah, I think Billy Nelson in my corner. That that's some that's a, that's an old head, a very old head. Um, a wise a wise head. I'll say. I wouldn't say old head. I shouldn't say that. Sorry, Billy. A wise head in the corner, which is uh, probably what I need at this stage as well. But like I say, don't let the grey beard fool you, young man. I can still do it. I can still do a little bit, Joe. And you're my, if I you're my manager, listen, if, if you want to be my manager and you want 20%, then you better put some work in next week. Okay, Mams Taylor. It's on. It's on. <laughs> <laughs> listen, Joe, gutted I wasn't at that fight at the weekend there, but I'm I'm glad you got you enjoyed it, man. And yeah, uh, like you, I said, it, every interview I watched of, on you when you were interviewing Lee and you were interviewing Eddie, you said that was the best atmosphere and the best show that you've ever yeah. witnessed. So, listen... You're due me one now, but I'm glad you enjoyed it, mate. Yes, thank you very much, mate. And let's uh, just hope you get some more family events for good shows soon. No chance, miss. I'm, <laughs> I think I'm going to disown my family, mate, so don't worry about that. <laughs> Excellent. Right, Joe, Listen, enjoy the rest of mate. Where yeah, can they find uh, us, Joe? They can find us everywhere by now. YouTube, Facebook, all your uh, streaming platforms, Spotify, iTunes, at IFL TV, TalkSport with Pure McCart. We we made it to the intro as well. We've made it to the pre-roll. I've seen that. I've seen that. Look, listen, we'll keep watching after this, and you'll see it again. Watch the watch the outro. So once I push, once this once this podcast ends, watch the outro, and you'll see me enjoying it. Listen, Joe, enjoy the rest of your Sunday, brother, and I'll see you next week. You too. See you Bye next now. week, man. Thank you very much. <laughs>